Welcome to my talk, and I'm Shen Yi Hong. And uh, today's topic will be about my GSAC project. Let's uh, uh, do some improvement on LDB uh, over kernel uh, kernel module. Yeah. So just please uh, please give me a chance to introduce myself. I'm a student in uh, Department of Computer Science in National Taiwan Normal University, and I'm interested in kernel and uh, yeah kernel some security or scheduler and virtualization part and tool chain, yeah. And uh, my, uh, I have done some uh, uh, pro uh, project or page on uh, FreeBSD. The first one is mode, uh, mode is a thinker. Uh, it uh, can work, uh, can work uh, uh, above two years. So I make it work again. And the other one is this, the uh, today's talk, uh, LDB kernel module, okay. So let's just get a ball roll, okay? So to, here is today's outline. Uh, first, I will introduce some 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 uh, some detail about toolchain and and <coughs> introduce what we already have in LDB, and then is what uh, I already have already done. And I have will have a quick demo about my work and uh, some ongoing work about this page. Okay, the first is. Uh, FreeBSD has changed the toolchain from GNU to LVN about 10 or 15 years ago. And there are some uh, tools change, uh, like compiler originally will have GCC, and then we have Clay now, and uh, of course the C++ library is changed, and the, some compiler runtime and other stuff like uh, link loader, and, uh, and here's a, today's, uh, Main, uh, main topic about LDB. Yes, uh, debugger also changed. And there are some things not change uh, when the toolchain change and something is not shift. Okay. Then here's a simple uh, introduction to the architecture of LDB. The first one is that uh, a debug instance is a target in LDB. We call it target, so it is built in. And uh, so, of course, you can run multiple targets at the same time. You can debug uh, one program and uh, a, a kernel at the same time. Of course, you have to change your target to make the command apply on the uh, correct target. Okay. The other thing is object file. Object file is how the LDB uh, interpret the static uh, binary file. Uh, you are executable. You are shared object. Okay. Uh, another thing is process. Process is the memory content of uh, your debugging target. Like uh, if you are debugging a user space program, you will have to read the memory from uh, ptrace and or other other uh, other system code. And of course, if you are uh, doing postmortem debug, you have to the, you have to have the ability to. Uh, read and uh, interpret the core dump in FreeBSD. And then the, it is ABI, uh, system V ABI. And the final thing is dynamic loader. So if you want to debug a target, this is the minimal requir requirement. So what we already have. The first thing we already have is object file. Of course, we already have, we should already have uh, Object file parser for ELF format. Uh, this is the basic uh, requirement. And the second thing is that we already have the ability to uh, interpret the core dump. We have process free BSD kernel plugin for LDB. And the third thing is that we already have system V ABI. Yeah. And so what we have to do is to implement the dynamic loader for plugin for FreeBSD kernel. So uh, it makes sense to <coughs> implement this plugin is that a kernel module is just like a shared library in user space. They share the same address space with kernel and they are loaded when needed. And of course they are loaded by the dynamic loader. A kernel has their loader, yeah. And the goal of this plugin, the first one is to pass all loaded kernel module to let the debugger know what we already loaded. And to, the second thing is that we have to, uh, 
have to tell the debugger what is the information of symbol. Uh, you know, we have function, we have uh, a variable, we have to tell the debugger what is the meaning of this symbol. And uh, the uh, and the third uh, goal is to uh, we have to be make this plugin be able to run in tier one platform. Tier one platform means uh, x86, uh, yes, and uh, the ARM64. And uh, uh, why, uh, oh, sorry, why the, uh, why the uh, platform makes sense is that uh, in x86, FreeBSD use relocatable file as a kernel module. And in ARM64, we have a shared object as a kernel module. So, okay, so here's the design. The first, uh, actually a dynamic loader plugin is called by process, uh, process plugin. So we should, uh, we should modify the process FreeBSD kernel to let it call the FreeBSD, uh, dynamic loader FreeBSD plugin. And then we have to find and verify the core dump information. And if it, uh, we should uh, verify if it is a uh, uh, valid L file, it, uh, header of L file should be correct, uh, correct and executable. And the third thing is that we have to pass the loaded module address and the layer name so that the LDB can know uh, where is the module and what is, the, what is the name of the module and where is their symbol start from. And the last thing is uh, we have to separate, handle the uh, locatable file and shell object uh, separately. I will tell this later. And so the first step, uh, we have to find and verify core dump. Uh, currently, uh, I find the kernel base, uh, kernel start address only uh, depends on the binary file. You, you know, in L file, we have low, uh, VMA for, for, uh, for a binary. So I just use the address recorded in the VMA as a base of kernel. And this is work. Uh, in all case, uh, yeah. But the problem is that if we have a case, a K, 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 K case in the future, it will not work because uh, there will be some offset between the uh, between the uh, address recorded in the binary and with uh, you know the true address. So there are some other available <coughs> method is that we can search near PC because. Uh, Bin a kernel is a small binary file, so it, you can just you know have some offset and search a previous page and a following page, and you will get the correct uh, correct uh, kernel address. The next step is that we have to pass the kernel module. So in FreeBSD kernel, the uh, information of module is recorded in a, a, a in a mem in a variable called linker files. And this, this structure is a linking list, so we just have to pass the linking list. And some field in this structure is important for the, for the, uh, for the debugger and are also ex, ex, uh, exposed by the kernel. So uh, this, file, this, uh, this member, uh, file name, we have to offer the file name, the path name, and the address to the debugger. Of course, the next member, so that we can find the next uh, kernel module. So it, the code, uh, the base logic is quite, quite simple. We just uh, pass the whole linking list and, and make this member to load into the LDB. So yes, it's quite simple. And then pass the next one until we reach the no pointer. And uh, the next thing is that we have to attach the symbol. Yes, uh, I think uh, uh, LDB already helped us to do this uh, by searching the system path. Uh, so yeah, but uh, an important thing is that in this step, we have to tell the loader uh, where the address of this module is loaded. So for this should be separated in two cases. One is for dynamic library and, and the other one is for real catable file. For dynamic library, because it's, it's already loaded, so we have to adjust all uh, segment address uh, manually. And for real catable kernel file, we just set the 
a load address to pretend to pretend it is loaded. And so that the final step, we put it into the loading, mod loading module list. So yeah, it just work. So there's a strange thing I have to uh, tell you that I, I forgot to, I don't know who, what, who, uh, who designed this, but uh, if we don't add this line in the lib claim, include the plugin, plugin dot dev, I, it will not run. But it, it does compile, it does link, but it just not work. I, I don't know why, but yes, it's not like cause caused me to wait to debug, yeah. So there are some modification uh, beyond a dynamic loader plugin. The first thing is that, or oh, it's quite uh, uh, strange. Uh, because we don't have, we, uh, for relocatable file, it should not be loaded, but in our case, because it is, it is a kernel module, so it is loaded by kernel. So, so what happened is that the load address uh, should be uh, recognized by the uh, LDB. So uh, in L file, we use the first load segment as the address space. But he, here is the uh, relocatable file. We don't have segment. So I use a simple intuition because uh, the load segment, the first load segment equals to the first alloc section. So I just do, do uh, write some code to get the, uh, yeah, you know, the load address. And the second part is that uh, there, because there is no uh, VMA in relocatable file, uh, in relocatable file, and here's an interesting thing, interesting thing, because there is no VMA, so, the debugger use accumulate the address to get its uh, VMA. You just, uh, you know, you have a section that start from zero and their size is uh, 100, so the next section start address will be 100 and their size accumulate it. But the interesting thing is that if a debugger, in, de debug file is for relocatable file, this will be failed because the original logic only check for the object file. I think it's, it's quite a little bit uh, defect about L, L file format because debug file cannot be a debug file standalone. Debug file must be a debug file for something like debug file for shared object, debug file for real cable file, debug file for uh, executable file. So L, uh, L format is quite strange in here. Yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't know. So I, how I fix this, uh, it's quite simple. Uh, I just check if it's a, it's, it's a debug file, debug file, and then if their address is zero, so that uh, it can be a real cable file, just as usual. But it's, it's just a little bit work around. I don't know if this thing will have, will, uh, have some error in the future. And then the, oh. Uh, the last thing is that uh, how to check if the binary is kernel. It is not the function provided by L file. L file don't have a file format called kernel, but uh, Mac OS have, Mac OS format have. But how do we know that? Uh, unfortunately, in FreeBSD kernel, that uh, FreeBSD kernel has a spatial interpreter section, and the content of this section is red query. So yes, I just check the then uh, if this, uh, the interpreter section has red herring uh, as a content, yes. So, and my work is actually uh, merging to the L LVM and I don't know, it has been merging to FreeBSD uh, one month or two months ago. So yes, yeah, thanks to the one who maintained uh, LVM in FreeBSD. So here's a quick demo. Uh, in other conferences, I actually have an inter interaction demo, but because it is already merged into FreeBSD, so it makes sense to just, if you are running current in your machine, you can just type this command. Oh, uh, please notice that if, because it's re required to read dev man, so you should give it a pseudo permission. Yes. So just have one. Demo, okay. So. 
Oh, yes, we. Oh. Hey, can you see the uh, text? Okay, I. Oh, I still don't. Uh, can you just see? Okay, okay, so we just load it. Oh, so. Okay, you can see the kernel is loaded, and okay, so we can use image list to list all image. Uh, you can see that uh, there are many kernel module loading in my computer, and but uh, with, without our uh, without without our, this plugin, you will see. Uh, sorry, I need more time to score. You will only see the first one, and. Yes, and it's low and it's low address. Not, not, uh, no any kernel module. So with my patch, it is available uh, for for LDB to pass this information about kernel module. And so here, yeah. So another thing we can test is to uh, if we can find some symbol of kernel module. Uh, we uh, we have a. Uh, I just try to find a random uh, a kernel module. To test, uh, I use UDL module. So UDL module has this uh, a variable, and then we can find it. Yes, we can get its name and method. Of course, uh, a member of this structure is created and uh, decoded. And of course, we can dive dive into the uh, dive into particular structure. Uh, method is uh, he, the um, method member is a uh, uh, is an array, so we can just access this array. <coughs> oh, sorry. Hey, oh, methods. Okay, so the description and its uh, address of the function. Yeah, you can. See, it is UDL prob, and his function address is correctly decoded. And cross the yes, uh, another uh, just a simple test. Okay, so it is my a uh, quick demo. Okay. Okay. So the next thing is an ongoing work. About this patch, uh, and, you know, as a kernel programmer, let me uh, let have, uh, as a uh, driver developer, uh, we may develop uh, some drivers, and the kernel may crash, and then we have to de use debugger to debug it. But there is a thing uh, that if there is no mechanism to check if the uh, you know the debug info and the and the uh, and current core dump is match it, matched. Uh, because you may uh, have multiple copies of uh, kernel module in, in your computer, and so you have, to, you have a mechanism to load the correct uh, debug file for the core dump. Uh, an, incompatible, an incompatible core dump may cause the offset of symbol be uh, not not correct, so so we cannot load the incompatible kernel code, uh, incompatible, incompatible kernel debug file for kernel module. So I offer a mechanism. The, the mechanism is to use a, a special section called download.gnu.buildid. This section uh, records the build ID for the for a specific binary. So. Uh, so the so I just simply check if the ID is same in binary format and compare with the uh, core dump. Uh, yes, this is just like I, the, initially it, this feature already only work on the 
uh, kernel, but I extend, I want to extend it to the kernel module. So here is the graph to, uh, you can, uh, I visualize it. Uh, so at first you have R8.ko, which is a kernel module, and it has its own .gnu.wid section. And it, when this kernel module is loaded by KLD, the KLD uh, will record this section to the, uh, the kernel will record, it, record this section to the uh, memory. So the A.KO's download.gnu.wid uh, section will be loaded to memory. So when the kernel crash, boom, it crash, and the memory will be, uh, become a core dump file. Then the core dump file is loaded by LDB. LDB will have the information in the memory. And then, like, then the uh, LDB can grab the um, you know, binary file and check if the uh, build ID in core dump is, uh, is compare, uh, compare with, uh, the, the LDB can compare with the uh, build ID in core dump with the uh, A.KO binary file to check if they are compatible. Yes, so it is a pretty simple uh, mechanism. Yes, and uh, yeah, some pro so how to achieve this is that by I, uh, by expose another member uh, another member to the linker file structure. I add two member. One is called UID ADDI, and one is called UID size. These two. Why why we need size is because UID may have a uh, different version. So we have to check if it's uh, some version, no so that we can we can correctly pass this UID information. Uh, yes, but uh, now uh, I have a page, uh, a prototype page about it to uh, make it work. But uh, now there are two types of uh, kernel module. One is preloaded by the bootloader. Another is loaded by KLD, yeah. So we have to handle these cl two class separately. Uh, for the one loaded by the KLD is much simpler because KLD will open the uh, the module file and then pass its uh, segment and section information. So let's the only thing we have to do for the KLD is to just add a add a uh, add uh, add in the uh, when the section is passed and to read the download.gnu.wid into memory and then assign to the, assign the address and size to the linker file. So it is quite simple for the uh, KLD. Both, both uh, share object case and relocatable case are do the same thing. The, uh, the preloaded module is much uh, harder to implement because uh, preloading, uh, when, when enter, when enter the kernel, the KLD will not open the file again when the module is preloaded. So the module, uh, the kernel relies the, rely, uh, depends on the information passed from the bootloader about the uh, yeah, kernel module. So for the shared object, we load uh, the section. We just load the uh, download.gnu.wid section and then pass the alloc, uh, we use a malloc and just copy the content of the download.gnu.id to the to that address, and then we pass this uh, address to kernel by using a. Uh, then the kernel can use preload search info to grab this information, and so the the first thing is down in bootloader. The second thing is down on the kernel. So the kernel has has. The only thing kernel has to do is to assign the address from uh, get from the uh, bootloader to the linker files. This is shared object case. The other the, the other case is relocatable file. Uh, in relocatable file, we have to uh, oh load all thing means load all section. We have to load all sec sections, but uh, there is a quite a uh, strange thing because uh, we, uh, I think uh, uh, relocatable kernel module don't have uh, 
any preloaded information, so I don't use preloaded information for real calibre file. I just, uh, I just in kernel, I just tra traverse the SHDR and get the address, uh, address of a uh, download that GNUWID section into linker file structure. Yes, so the surfing are same in preloaded module and uh, KLD. So here is a quite simple demo about this thing. Uh, you can see in the left picture, I uh, use LDB to get a, a, get a UID ADDR of a specific uh, module. And I use uh, X uh, command to get the information of module. So you can see in the in that address we have a we have a UID and we can we can match the uh, UID from the image list. It will tell us what is the UID in static file, static binary file. So we can see they are both same. So it works. But uh, uh, we have we actually have a. Uh, implementation about it, but some committer have a uh, different view to implement some uh, on the detail of implement this. So I we just discussing discussing about this, and hopefully some days uh, will work in FreeBSD. So yes, so let's all have any question. Okay, no question. Okay, so thank you everyone.